Hey there, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here, Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time. Almost 1 a.m. Eastern Time, I wanted to look at a quick update here on what the GFS shows. All eyes on Maria now as it moves away from Puerto Rico. Look at that huge eye that has developed. Uh, devastating impacts on Puerto Rico. Those impacts are continuing as these very heavy bands continue to move over. And uh, even over here across parts of the Virgin Islands, these rain bands continue. But man, look at the size of that eye. My goodness. That's impressive, you have to admit. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see it in the daytime, and that will certainly spread out those hurricane force winds uh, over a large area and probably keep this from becoming very intense. But you never know. It could try to tighten up a little bit. But uh, that's the unraveling of a very powerful Category 5 to 4 as it uh, moved just south of St. Croix and then here like this and then exiting out. And you can see where it is now uh, to the northeast of the Dominican Republic. It's going to be very interesting to see this on the visible satellite pictures later in the day on Thursday. So the 11 p.m. update shows this gently curving track seemingly away from the United States, and, you know, that's true. And while that's the most likely scenario, most of the modeling shows that, there are some ensemble members of the various models and even some operational models that bring it up and keep it much closer and then shortcut it into the mid-Atlantic states and so it's not over. It's not over till it's over anyway. And we just want to make sure we stay on top of this and not paint unrealistic expectations uh, that it will absolutely miss the United States and just go on out its merry way. Uh, or, you know, don't want to suggest that it's going to come in and cross North Carolina. We just don't know for sure. And so that's what this is all about, is each model cycle, um, maybe not each of them, but a couple of times a day we can take a gander at what the models are showing. So let's take a look at the GFS, and this is the very latest run off the NCEP site, and we're looking at the 500 millibar pattern, or about eh, roughly 20,000 feet in the atmosphere, and this is the reflection of Jose, and here is Maria uh, at the 8 o'clock Eastern Time hour. All right, so this is where it was when it was initialized at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this and it's going to go by very, very fast, and then we can point things out as it does so, okay? And this is the next seven days. So you see a few things you can see clearly, and I'm going to trace the route of Maria when it starts over again. You can see clearly as I chase it with the telestration here uh, that the track is up, and then it tries to bend back there right at the end, it looks like. I did a pretty good job tracing that out. Uh, it looks like a little piece of upper-level energy comes around, and tries to sort of capture it and pinwheel it in. Uh, I'm not even sure where that comes from. I'm also not sure why it has this bend off to the northeast for just a little bit of time um, for no apparent reason. I mean, I know what it's showing is that there's a lack of ridging up here, you know, to keep it uh, moving more west. So let's just stop it as it starts to do that turn. You can see it's moving northwest, and then all of a sudden it's getting ready to move more to the northeast here and I'm going to change my color to blue and you know the reason is that we don't we don't have this height line right here like extending over like that for example uh, that would keep it on a more northwesterly course that's not there so the thicker part of the atmosphere is clearly uh, off to the east over here and so it's got less resistance so it's able to turn more towards the northeast on this particular run and this is the first time that I have seen it go that much more to the east. You know, there's Bermuda uh, right there. So it kind of threatens Bermuda a little bit. Um, so I don't know what the deal is with this run, like why it shows that, especially since the GFS does get rid of Jose up here completely. It just whittles away. It's gone. And, you know, it's no longer a factor. But I just wonder if there's just enough weakness out here, sort of like a valley for the water to flow through, so to speak, and this is going to try to find the path of least resistance. That's what they do. Um, so this is just one run, and it's the Zero Z GFS. We'll see what the Zero Z Euro shows, and the Canadian, and the UK Met, and all of this will be taken into consideration, of course, by the specialist at the National Hurricane Center, but for the most part, I guess it's easy to surmise 
that the odds favor that Maria will eventually just turn and head out to sea. Um, whether or not that's the end game for sure, I think anybody would know that you need to keep a wary eye on it until it is doing just that. Uh, and you can bet that as it moves across that path, whatever the path is, the swells are going to come out again from it and reach the east coast. And with a huge satellite signature of the eye like that, the radius of maximum winds is going to be enormous. Uh, your huge wind field out here, so the waves are going to get kicked up a lot. And it's such a large area, too. You know, if it passes you know, 200 miles east of Cape Hatteras, there could be tropical storm force winds at Cape Hatteras, as an example. Uh, or Bermuda on the east side, right? So, you know, direct impacts from the core, not very likely for the east coast yet. But we're still talking, look at this, folks, that, that last frame, i got to emphasize, that's 168 hours out. That's 48 hours more farther out in time or further out in time than the Hurricane Center's five-day prediction, which is this, the forecast track. And even this position is subject to errors over 200 miles. You understand? So we really need to take all that into consideration and realize that, you know, it's not over till it's over. So there's no call. I'm not making a call on this just yet, so to speak, that it's going to do this, that, or the other. We're just showing you what the models show here, at least the GFS. So I'm going to go to sleep because I desperately need it. This <laughs> stuff gets exhausting. But you know what? It's interesting. One year ago, right now, or tonight, whatever, I started picking up on the modeling, especially the GFS, showing what became Hurricane Matthew. Already been a year since that started picking up uh, over, over Nigeria, I believe it was. And tomorrow I'm going to dig up a couple of uh, uh, minutes of that video where on the 21st I really started talking about it. Just to kind of take a look back in time. I think that's going to be interesting. Already been a year since Matthew was a thing. That the birth of it, the seedling tropical wave, began with some vorticity and energy over Nigeria. And you saw what happened with that. Um, wow, already been a year. Anyway, that's it for me for tonight. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'm Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com. We'll see what everything looks like over the course of the day on Thursday. And I'll have more for you uh, probably near the noon hour later in the day. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in, uh, what is it, about 10 hours or so.